Alex, in one of my favorite cities in the whole world, Copenhagen, Denmark. He writes to me and he says, Paul, thank you for the time and energy you invest in shedding light on the many issues we are all engaged in and our quest to optimize our enjoyment of music and the transcendence that it can bring to our lives. That's nice. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You know, I enjoy coming down, spending my Saturdays with you, and it's fun for me. It can be a bit exhausting. <laughs> I got a lot of crap going on in my life, but I, I really, I take this time as personal time. Uh, and, and by the way, we just started uh, a few weeks ago a new YouTube channel on octave recordings. And I'm spending even more time now down here making videos to try and help people understand the process of recording, the process of mixing, of, of the making of the music. Because one of the things that gets me really excited when we start talking about designs and stuff is we're developing an entirely new way of making music. We, you know, we're into DSD. And, but DSD is, is an older technology. It has a lot of problems and we're solving them with new technology. We're inventing new stuff to make great recordings, and that, um, that gets me all fired up. That's the kind of stuff I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go, oh, okay, I get it. Um, so anyway, if you have a chance, um, go subscribe over at our YouTube channel. I think you'll enjoy it. I'll have a lot of new content. We're going to have master classes and music, and good stuff. So anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, he was just uh, having a nice... Uh, compliment there. All right, here's a question which I have pondered but rarely seen addressed. Impedance and impedance matching between units in our music reproduction chain from the source via amplification to the loudspeakers, which ostensibly affects the quality of the sound we hear, maybe even substantially. Moving coil cartridges and phono stages and the cables we use as digital and analog interconnects to loudspeaker cables are not neutral and they add impedance characteristics of their own, which I suppose is one of the reasons that cables sound different. Is that true? No, not really. So here's the deal. Yes, cables make a difference. Oh my gosh, yes, cables make a difference. But we have to separate out kind of the, the reasons why they do. And I'm not gonna sit here and try to explain to you why cables all sound different. We, we've been over this and we'll go over it again. I'll, I'll tell you the experiences of building my first power cable of using Romex and having no highs and then adding uh, braided wire um, and um, thin gauge wire to get some highs and then people saying, wait a minute, it's a power cable. You, you, you're not having highs and lows go through it. Yeah, 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 I got it. Anyway, we're not going there. Where we will go is specifically to the question of impedance. Now, generally speaking, the impedance of, let's, let, let's start taking, let's start from the beginning, because one of the things you mentioned does have an impact, and that's the moving coil cartridge, but it's not in the cable. The impedance of a cable is going to be extremely high relative to anything that would have an effect on the sound quality. So we're not really concerned with impedance here. Now in a moving coil cartridge, we are concerned with the input impedance to the phono stage. Oh my gosh, yes, because that's a tuned circuit. So a moving coil or a moving magnet phono cartridge is basically an inductor. And when you have an inductor, it has to terminate into an impedance. And that's usually a low impedance for a moving coil cartridge and a higher impedance for a moving magnet cartridge. But take a moving coil cartridge, run it in say at 100 ohms, and then change that impedance, which is determined by the input setting on your phono stage, to 1,000 ohms. And tell me you don't hear a difference. And I'll tell you, you better go hear your, you better go find your ear doctor, because you'll hear, the, it, it, it changes the whole tank circuit, the whole, in, in, uh, um, it's like a filter, so it'll, it'll actually, you can measure that. I mean, it'll, it'll change the frequency response. But 
That's not in the cable. That's on the preamp input. Same with a, a loudspeaker. If you have an 8 ohm loudspeaker and you have a power amplifier, the power amplifier has hopefully an output impedance that is well below an ohm. We should be into the micro ohms, milli ohms, micro ohms, very, very low impedance feeding this 8 ohm load. The wire itself, unless you've done something crazy, if you measure the impedance or the resistance of that wire, it should be almost zero. It should present almost nothing to impede or resist the signal. So yes, cables make a difference. No, it is not generally because of its impedance or its resistance. Shouldn't matter. Hope that helps. Thanks. Talk to you later.